welcome everyone. We are on episode 11. Um, wow. You're actually the last person I'm going to have come on for this season. And then we're going to end it and we're going to go into season two. So, okay. yes. And hopefully I'll be a part of season two. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> come back, share all your journey. Because there's more to it. <laughs> yes. Well, I would like to welcome the beautiful Miss Tysela, correct, right? Yes. Yes. Man, every time I see you, you just look so young. Really? I'm trying. Yeah. Day over 30. <laughs> and I'm 50 plus. Oh, my God. You look uh-huh. amazing. Thank How are you, you able to, like, you know, six grandkids and four children? Uh. Yeah. I don't drink, do drugs, or smoke any of that. I never did. Drink a lot of water. I drink yes. a lot of water. <laughs> and um, just, you know, allow my kids to teach me. Because mm. as we forever evolving, yes, we have to learn with the new generation. Yes, we so, do. We really do. Yeah, so it's like, you know, that that's part of keeping me young. Yeah, like, oh, put water in the, put limit in the water. Yes. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's yeah. what helped me to stay young. Nice, nice. And a lot of prayer. Okay, you're good. I'm sorry. And a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. A whole lot. A whole lot. (laughs) Yes. I love that. I love that. So I like to introduce my moms and let them, you know, share a little bit about who they are outside of being a parent. Okay. So the show is all yours. This is usually a difficult task for me (laughs) because, you know, for a long time I didn't know who I was. Mm. So now I'm becoming, Ooh. and I learned a lot about me, yes. and I'm still learning, still healing and going through my journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a mother of four, grandmother of six, um, wow. and now an author. Oh my God, congratulations. <laughs> an author, and um, they, I'm Evangelist. Evangelist oh, nice. Tyson Armstrong. Um, I love, love, love my family. I know. The support that they give me. Mm-hmm. It's just beautiful. Like to see it in motion is like, oh wow, we yes. doing this. I know. Um I love my grands. Like they do something to me when they're around. <laughs> I'm like, oh God. Um the kids say I love them more than I love them. Well, it could be some truth to that. Yeah. <laughs> um their time is up, right? Yes. <laughs> um, I love God. Yes. Always put him first. Mm. He will carry you through. I love that. Speak some wisdom to yes. our crowd. Put Please. God first in everything you do. Mm. Parenting, yourself. Um, I, I, my tattoo, my first tattoo I got when I was fifty one. And it's fifty one. And it's self love over everything. Which means wow. if you pour the love back into God and put him first, yes. He's gonna teach you how to love yourself. Ooh. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Seriously. And I had to learn that. And I'm still mm-hmm. learning. I'm a work in progress. I yeah. make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. But when I make those mistakes, I go to God and ask him for forgiveness for one. Mm-hmm. And then show me, help right. me to be a better me. And then walk in that righteousness. Yes. Yes. Be you obedient. Have to. Yes. Be obedient. Because, <laughs> honey, if you're yeah. not obedient. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you're going to be in the wilderness. You really are. On a, on what they call a hamster in the wheel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So just be obedient, um, mm-hmm. trust God in everything. Mm. Sometimes the road get a little rough and a little tough, but just yeah. hang in there. Trust his plan, his yes. purpose, and everything will follow. Mm. I love this. Yes. I love it. I, said, I know she's going to come <laughs> up here. She's going to give some wisdom. Yes. We love yes. that. Yes. So I never knew you had four kids. I only knew about three. Tyson, uh-huh. Terrell, Terrell, my son up in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. The Chris one that does Del- music now? Uh-uh. Corvell does the music. Rel, my son up in Jersey. You probably never met him oh, okay. because at the time we were neighbors. Um, yeah. He was living in New Jersey. Oh, yeah, okay. I four, so Did he, he come visit often? A lot. We go up there. I just came from up there, but it yeah. was for my uncle's funeral. But, oh, okay. Um, yeah, he comes down a lot. He's coming down in May. Um, he works for Progressive. Oh, nice. He's in uh, Arizona right now <laughs> for training. But I can say that being a teenage mother was not Mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. So having four kids, by the age of 21, I had three kids. Wow. Okay. I was going to ask you that. Yes. What age did you have Chrissy? I had Chrissy at 21. Okay. I had her right at 21. Um, I was 15 when I became a first-time mother. Okay. You were 15? Yes, 15. 
Mm-hmm. Wow, and but, we've been neighbors for so long, and I never knew this. Yeah, yeah, fifteen years old. What uh-huh. now? I'm um, fifteen years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was not easy. I know. But I knew at a young age that if I could give my kids back to God, yeah, that it's going to be all right. Yeah. So when my two oldest, who are fifteen months apart, mm. I took them as toddlers by their hand each night. Mm-hmm. Cause you're something about the human touch, it means yeah. so much. Yeah, it does. So touch your kids, <laughs> um, in a good way. Yeah. Um, take them, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not yeah. So I um, took them by the hand, mm-hmm. and this was spoken to me. And I took them by their hands and prayed with them night mm. and day. And every so often, I call them up. We let's do a conference call. We're gonna pray. Mama gonna pray over y'all. Mm-hmm. But I'm praying for them daily. Mm-hmm. Um. So back to, I'm sorry, let me backtrack. It's okay. Tyson, Tyrell, Christel, Corvell. Okay. I didn't mean that way, but it just flowed. Okay. <laughs> how, how old were you when you had Corvell? 31. Oh, okay. 30, 31. Okay. Yeah, I think I was 30 or 31. It's nine years between him and Chrissy. He's my oops, baby. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, really? He's following me. <laughs> He's <gonna see> yes. <laughs> he was my oops, baby, but I wouldn't trade them for the world. Yeah. And there was a battle when I was pregnant with him mm. because it's like nine years. And don't get me wrong, I did yeah. get pregnant between Corvell, Chrissy and Corvell, mm-hmm. but I had a stillborn. Mm. So that's a okay. whole other story. Um, so I was contemplating getting an abortion because yeah. I'm like nine years, you know, and I didn't want to do it alone again. Yeah. I knew in my heart of hearts that me and their dad wasn't going to be together. Okay. And I was like, I didn't want to do this alone. Yeah. So it was a battle. And when I, I would call for medical transportation cause I only lived down here a little bit. Yeah. So I called for medical transportation mm-hmm. and the guy that picked me up. The best looking man I ever saw. I had these brown <laughs> eyes. Oh uh, yeah, he's hungry <laughs> now. Had these brown eyes. He looked me dead in my face, mm-hmm. and he said, "Sister, don't worry about it." He said, "That baby you carrying could be the next president, the next NBA star, mm. NFL player." And I just was like, and you know, man, yeah. I felt like that was God answering my prayer, like yeah. because I was, it was a battle in my head. Yeah. The so, mental struggle. Yes, yes. So, and I was like, I, oh, I yeah. yeah. So I ended up keeping up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God. <laughs> yeah, he's 23 today. He's wow. 23 years old. He just had a birthday in March. Mm, he's so, a Pisces? No, Aries. Aries, mm-hmm. okay. Just okay. had a, his, his birthday the day before my Is mom. Is he in? Yeah, in, he lives with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we live in a uh, like a three-level town home. So he's downstairs and I'm upstairs. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. I was never the kind of mother, once you turn 18, get out. No, I didn't want to set yeah. my kids up for failure. No, seriously. It's like establish yourself mm-hmm. to lease a place where you feel comfortable moving out. Yeah. I'm not one of them parents, oh, 18, get out. No, Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to do that. No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Because yeah. like you said, you know, wanted to get into you not wanting to raise your children the traditional way. Yes. So what, did, what would you consider the traditional way and what way worked best for you um, as a non-traditional way, I guess? Okay. Yeah. The traditional way is living up to society. Mm-hmm. You got to have the best clothes, the best sneakers, the best mm. ride. No. That's right. the traditional way of, to me. Yeah. Where... My mom raised us like, whenever you go out, you always got to look right, you know, Mm -hmm. and that put pressure on you, even as an adult, because it's like, some days I just want to go out and look raggedy, you know, like not raggedy, but you know, just don't want to do the whole thing. Naturally. Yes. You get a lot of compliments. (laughs) I've noticed that when you just naturally just about your day. So it's now I'm like trying to reteach myself. So I Mm -hmm. taught my kids. Be the best you you can be. Yeah. I was never trying to live my life through my kids' life because you mm-hmm. know you have those type of parents. Yeah. I was never trying to guilty parent. Hey, your father not here. I'm not worried. I can't do nothing about that. I'm mm-hmm. here for you. Yeah. So I wasn't doing that guilty parent because when you do that guilty parent, sometimes the kids use that against you. Yeah, they do. And I'm not going to use that guilty parent because I did the best I could. Yeah. I was a teen teenage mother. I got a high school diploma. I don't have a GED. I have a high school diploma. Wow. So you finished. Yes, high school. I finished high school. And what helped me? Um, this it was a school inside the hospital in New Jersey, oh. and it was called Temp Teenage Expectant Mothers Program. 
Nice. So I went to the school. So if I went into labor, just go downstairs. I had a baby come back upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> the resources. Yeah, yeah. But that was back then in yeah. the 80s. So I don't know, you know, if they had that now. Mm -hmm. But the non-traditional way, me being a teenage mother to me, yeah. was instilling God in them mm. at an early age. Yeah. You don't find too many teenagers. But you do now that yeah. turn more to God. But at that time, you didn't find a lot of teenagers, yeah. like, really giving their kids back to God. Right, right. So that was non-tradition to me. And another non-tradition, I didn't beat my kids. Mm, okay. I beat Tyson and Tyra one time. <laughs> and guess why? Because they were fighting each other. Okay. And you know what I told them? Mm -hmm. I said, it's hard enough out here in the streets. People are going to be against us. Mm -hmm. But in this household, we're not going to do that. Yes. So I know if anything happened to me, mm -hmm. they got each other's back. Absolutely. But I think Tyson should have got a lot more whooping. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he should have got some more hugs. I, I asked him the other day, I said, did I not hug you enough? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, a, come here, give me a hug. Because I do that to him sometimes. Yes. I'm like, give me a hug. So, you know, but the thing about it, I learned. Mm -hmm that they always respect me. Yeah, they do. Even the kids that I took in, you know. I was never here. <laughs> they always respect me. They mm -hmm. never disrespect me. Even now, like, if Tyson's smoking a cigarette, he got it behind his back, you yeah. know. They won't cuss around me unless they're telling a mm -hmm. the story, you know. Yeah. Um, they, they just, we just had a love that mm -hmm. God yes. gave us. Right, right. We had a lot of love for ourselves and mm -hmm. for other people. Yes. It was more than enough to share. So, you know, it's like Chrissy being the only girl. Sometimes I had mostly girls that I took in. Yeah. I don't think she liked that too much. Because, <laughs> you know, it was like, yeah. you know. That's my I, mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You but, were um, very, you were very kind because, you know, living next door to you. Now I'm starting to see where all the grace came from me being a teen mom. Uh, and you open your doors uh -huh, to me. You uh -huh. know, your mom was so kind. You hungry, baby? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she still is. She'll feed yeah. you. She live right down the street. Yeah. Go, go down the street and eat with her. <laughs> she looking for anybody to come eat with her. But Aww. um, yeah, it's just people tell us that they never seen a family like us. Mm. And that's because to yeah. this day, we put God first. Mm. Mm -hmm. They may not go to church. We're not a perfect family, right. but we're a loving family. We're not trying to, you know, backbite anyone or anything right. like that. We're Absolutely. pure and genuine with it. Absolutely. Tyson, when he was at work one day, mm -hmm. he gave this Mexican man the shoes off his feet. Aww. But all my kids are that way. Yeah. They all like that. And at first, I give credit to God. And then I won't take all the credit because their dad was very... Okay. He was very giving. Despite his habit, he yeah. was very giving. You mentioned that. So I wanted to know, um, you said you struggled a lot as a teen mom, but you had a lot of love. Mm -hmm. How were you able to keep the love flowing, knowing that, you know, oh, I'm struggling right now. I don't know what to do. Like, what helped you continue to love yourself and your children the way that you did? God. Hey, number God. You got to have faith. It, yes. That's it. <laughs> because oh I, when I first moved to mm -hmm. the one down here, I was living in the West End. Yeah. I would walk to church. I didn't have a car at the time. I would mm. walk to church because I knew if I stayed there, yeah. something was going to shake or change. Right. Um, loving someone that's strung out on drugs is mm. hard. Yes. And I feel... I didn't have that balance. Mm -hmm. I felt if I would have poured more into him, yeah, we probably would have been married and okay. Okay. Rest is so he passed away in 2016. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, but I was pouring more into my children mm. because I didn't want them to become a statistic, a statistic. Yeah. So I put more of that into them versus mm. into our relationship. So. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. you know, now that I sit back and look at it, I was a young mother just yeah. wanting to raise my kids right. Exactly. exactly. So that's why I didn't... You didn't know that you could help him as yeah. much as you could at yes. this time. Yes, so. yes. Yeah. So, but I will say in life, find the balance. Yes. In all relationships, whether it's with your kids, yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I did not do neither. I didn't pour into myself a lot. Mm, it was always about the kids. Always was about the kids. But I didn't know about self-love and me time right. and all that stuff because I was in survival mode. Yeah. 
not thriving and mode. that just became like a thing now yes. self-love people really just actually found out about it like yeah. in the last five years yeah. so i could only imagine you know back in your day what y'all didn't know at the time yeah. that you actually have access to right now yeah and see my mom was a hard worker as well my mm -hmm. dad passed away when i was six years old Aww. so my mom did a wonderful job raising us she was very strict i i was gonna ask that but i could see it <laughs> Ooh, she was very strict but uh -huh. i understand why she was mm -hmm. strict and um, mama, she was the she was the kind of strict that was scary though. Like yeah. when I became <laughs> pregnant with my first child, you were scared. Yeah, I was scared. I didn't tell. Well, she asked me when I was seven months. You hid it that long. Mm -hmm. But she said she knew. But the reason I hid it because my mm -hmm. mom, like, she wasn't never open to a lot of stuff. Okay. And I just couldn't bring myself to go to her. I felt like I disappointed her, mm. as well as disappointed myself. Yeah. But it happened. Mm -hmm. Was abortions a thing back then? Yeah, abortions was a thing back oh, okay. then. Abortion been a thing for a long time. Wow. It's just, it just, you know, more yeah. so now. But <laughs> everything was a thing back then. Even Little House on the Prairie days had yeah. all the gays. I'm serious. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but um, it just more so, it's more open now. Right. Um, but my mom, she was really strict. Like, mm. she's not the kind where you could go talk to her about anything. Yeah. So that's why I was afraid. Mm, I can I can understand so, that. Strict so, but very loving. She was strict. Her love was through her food, cooking. Mm, okay. Her love language was cooking. Okay. She never was a kind, I love you and give you a hug. Not that kind. Okay, so she wasn't affectionate. Mm -mm. So where did your love come from? I did the opposite. Okay. You know how your parents, they do yeah. one thing and you say, I don't want to be that way. Mm -hmm. My mother used to cuss like a sailor. <laughs> I don't cuss. Never okay. did. And then when I do try and throw a cuss word out there, my kids like, you don't even sound right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't even sound right. I'm like, well, I won't do it. Um, but my how mom. How many how um, many of y'all was it? My mom had four girls. I have no brothers. Oh my god, I didn't know you had four sisters. Mm -hmm. Well, it's my oldest sister, mm -hmm. then myself, and I have two younger sisters. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Young all right this, I, these people live next door to me and it's yeah, like a mystery young, now yeah yeah i have two younger sisters and one older sister but they were all up in new jersey mm -hmm. um but my mom she loved to cook even to this day mm. that's her love language mm. so i even learned about love language like as i'm yeah. reteaching myself and relearning mm -hmm. myself love language my yeah. love language is being of service right and i find that a lot of people don't want service. They yeah. want tangibles. Mm -hmm. But a service is better. It is. Because that service is going to teach you. Mm -hmm. You can have it. What they say, you can teach a man to, how they say, fish. is rather mm -hmm. teach them to fish and then they can have it versus right. doing it for them. Yes. So my love language is being of service. But I find being of service, I give too much of myself because I want to help the world. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see that in you. You're very caring. <laughs> I want to help the world. And then it's like, when yeah. people don't get up, I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> so I just had to learn to stop pulling back and really stay yeah. in my lane. Yeah. And really what I'm pouring into people pour into me. Yes. Because I, so it's like, I want everybody around me. Everything mm. attached to me win. That's yes. what I want. And I want everybody to grow. And it's like, I yeah, I got it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a solution mm -hmm. here. And I'm always problem solving. That's yes. just in me. I can't help myself. So when mm. I see a problem, like, oh, uh, nope. <laughs> and it's hard to kind of pull that back. Yeah. But, you know, I had to learn to pull it back. Right. Because you want more for people than they want for themselves. That's so true because you see that potential and you get caught up in that sometimes. And then you realize mm, this person is going to have to start seeing and living up yes. to their own potential. Yes. So... Did you, do you feel like you got pregnant because you had a strict mom and it was like a, an escape to go? Honestly, mm -hmm. no, Okay. it wasn't a planned thing and I didn't do it on purpose, anything yeah. like that. Uh, it was just heat of the moment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I, I really did love my kid's father. Like yeah. we just connect, we yeah. were silly together. Like, you know that song, mm -hmm. um, Twin, Where Have You Been? And he was yeah. my soulmate. We just were silly together. Mm -hmm. But that was love that I knew at that age and at that yes. time. 
Exactly. Um, does, does all of them have the same dad? No, my son is um, in Jersey. He does it. Okay, so, so the other Tyson, three. The three that look alike. Yeah. <laughs> but all my kids look like me, uh -huh. but yeah. <laughs> but Tyson, Christelle, and Corvell have the same dad. Okay. Corvell has a different dad. And that was like just so. Oh, hold on. So you went back. Uh -huh. When you had go uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of fling thing, gotcha. um, but it was love what I knew at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't honestly tell you I didn't want kids at all. <laughs> my friend was it. like, "But somebody want kids did it for," and I, I, I never liked the pain. Yeah, pain. I was, yeah. and I had all my kids in natural birth except for about they gave me epidural. Okay. But I was mad that I got the epidural. But I was like, I could have did this, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I never wanted kids. But Aww. God had other plans, and yes. I'm very grateful and thankful that mm -hmm. I had them. Because if I didn't have them, God only knows where I would be right now, honestly. Yeah. What well, well, What do you think you'd be doing if you didn't have no kids? I don't know. Maybe I'd be slimmer. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> Cutting up a little bit. Yeah, you want to go to ATL? <laughs> oh no, not there. But I don't know where. I, honestly, I can't imagine life without them now. I know. I just met Chrissy when I got off work. You know, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. She, I remember one time um, I was over your house, and she said that you and her had got into it over a granola, granola bar. Yes, that hurt her heart. I'm like, okay, her and her mom must not argue a lot. <laughs> we <laughs> never argue, never. And, and in my household. <laughs> <laughs> we never argue, right? So I have mm -hmm. bought some food stamps from somebody, right? Yeah. So I'm on a little budget here, Chrissy. She got the biggest box of granola bar she could find. So, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get the important stuff. Yeah. I put that box of granola bars back and oh my God. Oh, it's that like was I told her favorite. You know what? I'm gonna buy her box of granola bars. Chrissy, I got you. Okay. <laughs> um, but it tore her little heart up. Mm -hmm. And I was like thinking, like, man, I really hurt her. Uh -huh. Cause she probably really, really wanted those granola bars. Yeah. And I didn't even think to ask her, you know, because I put mm -hmm. the I'm survival mode. Yes. So I'm not thinking I'm like, we ain't gonna eat off granola bar, we ain't gonna survive with that, you know, we need right. some food that's sustainable absolutely so i felt like but it was a huge box i could have compromised with her and say yeah. get a smaller box no me and chrissy never argue um, i was so in tune with my kids and you might this is I'm, amazing i'm gonna say this but <laughs> when you're in tune with your kids you just know mm -hmm. i knew the very day chrissy lost her virginity oh my god she was shocked she looked at me just how your eyes got big uh -huh. that's how she was like ma how did you know i said i just know yeah you can you can really you so, can feel when they do it yes, they're supposed yes, to be doing. Yep. And she was there so shocked because that's how in tune I know when they was having a bad day, a good mm -hmm. day. I know when they were feeling low down. Yes. I just felt it. Right. And being in that tune in tune with your kids will save you a whole lot of trouble. It will. It will, because I, I would definitely say I'd be knowing certain stuff that be going on with my daughter and I'm like what should I do in these moments that she's sad or she's down right now? Does she want to talk? Does she want to hug? So what was your um, techniques that you use when you could feel intuitively that something wasn't right? Just go to them and ask them. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to talk, don't make them. Yeah. Don't make them talk. Just listen. Yeah. And if you can't listen to their words, listen to their heart or tears and give yeah. them a hug. Okay. Just hug them. That's yeah. why I asked Tyson. I said, they're not hug you know. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, he's a comedian in the family, yes, though. He is. Yes, <laughs> he's he a comedian. Is. But um, just hug them because I've learned mm -hmm. we want our kids to do what we want them to do when mm -hmm. we want them to do it. But right. what if they're not ready? Yeah. And I can give you a class example. Mm -hmm. I was washing my car one day. And I'm like, Corvella boy, get out of here and help me wash this car. And he was like, Ma, I don't feel like it. This is my car. I want it clean. You know, it, yeah. my car stayed clean, but you know. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Ma, I don't feel like it. And I was like, Corvella, come out here and help me with this car. Yeah. He came out. He did the worst job ever. He might as well have stayed in the house. <laughs> but then I had to take a step back. Yeah. I wanted that. Mm -hmm. But maybe he really was just tired. Yeah. Okay. So. Right. Give yourself a break and give the kids a break because mm. they're human. Yeah, they are. And they I are. allow my kids to speak their mind, mm. but listen and understand. Mm -hmm. So if you start that young, yeah, it will help so much. It will. It definitely will. You stress yourself out trying to do 
what you want your kids to do. Mm. So just chill out. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like, because you, you said that you want them to be who God allowed them to be. Do you mm -hmm. Are you proud of them? Or do I'm you very feel proud any of sense of disappointment in any of them? Not at all. My, all of them are making you proud. Very proud. Oh, yeah, I, I, I cry sometimes when I'm <laughs> laying in the bed at yeah. night because I don't have a TV in my room. I don't. Me neither. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a TV in my room because it's like I like to go back through my day mm -hmm. like a roller that's like, what can yeah. I do, have done different? What can I do to better somebody yeah. or help somebody? Right. So that time to. What Real they call sure. debrief, yeah, yes. Debrief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the TV is a distraction. It is. So sometime at night, I think about a lot of people really think of material things as a blessing. Mm. Baby, when you never had to go to a courthouse, mm -hmm. a jailhouse, mm. the hospital, mm. the cemetery, mm -hmm. or even go to somebody's job, you never had to fight for them. Mm. They never had to fight. Yeah. That's the blessing. Right. That's the blessing. It really is. And so Tyson, my comedian, <laughs> he has his own, he franchises his own cleaning business. I'm very proud of him. I heard. Congratulations, yes. Tyson. Um, my son Tyrell that lives in New Jersey. He mm -hmm. works for Progressive. Nice. Very nice job. Mm -hmm. Um, Christelle, mm -hmm. the RN. Yes. Back in school for her Ooh. bachelor's. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. And Corvell, he's he was in um ODU for his physical therapy, but then the pandemic happened. Oh. So he was in there like maybe a half a semester. Yeah. And he was upset. He was like, I didn't even get the college experience. So when he came home, uh, he took another route. So now yeah. he did CNA. So now his sister is on him yeah. like, you need to do more because you knew the heart inside out and I didn't and I yeah. was in school. So he is going back to school. He want to be a male nurse. So that is so good. Yes. That is so good. So yes, I'm proud of all my babies. I know that's right. <laughs> so who is giving you all of these grandkids? Tyson got three and Chrissy got three. Okay, it's a tie. Uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> Between yeah. those two, they can okay. stop. They stop. I'm very happy yeah. with the flow that I got. You yes. know, but yeah, Chrissy has two boys and a girl. Tyson has two boys and a girl, and I had two boys and a girl. Oh, wow. They don't need to go no more. Yeah. They don't stop. <laughs> yeah, so that's how that works. Yeah, yeah. So, but my son in Jersey don't want no kids, and Corvell said he don't want no kids. He okay. said, man, I want to just, you know. Yeah, focus on himself. Yeah, so the girl he's dating now, she don't want no kids. I'm like, ooh, thank God. Okay. Yeah, because he's, he's still pretty young. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So Corvell was my, he was always my, always my go-getter child, like, mm -hmm. He would do stuff my other kids like yeah. skate they don't skate um <laughs> go down water slides like stuff that give me a heart attack that's what yeah. he did okay <laughs> and I'm like, he wants to play football yeah. i'm like okay cool well we're going and, you know, i'm, I'm yeah. working at um pediatric doctor though so i like reading about concussions and stuff <laughs> so he wants to play football and i ne like i said i didn't want to mm -hmm. stop them from doing anything but i'm like lord football so into the season september mm -hmm. he broke his finger oh. I was sad and happy at the same time because <laughs> he was out for the season. Yeah. I'm like, yes, Lord, yes. But um, he had to have surgery. Miracles. Yeah, he had to have surgery. I mean, he he broke it. He had to have surgery. We were for therapy and everything, but he was out for the season. Mm. After that, he was like, Ma, I you think I'm going to go back. He said, I think I'm going to go to soccer. I was like, yeah, soccer. Yeah. yeah. We do soccer. <laughs> yeah, so he did soccer, and I was mm -hmm. cool with that. Okay. You know, but, oh, yeah, other yeah. stuff. Corvette, everything. My other kids didn't put me through. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm like, oh, The little saying. risk taker. Yeah. yeah. And then he went and bought a Mustang. I'm like, oh. Was he at the house a lot when? when Corvall? When, yeah, when you lived in No, Corvall was younger. So he was, he's 23 now. So mm -hmm. he had to be about what? Maybe about 10 or so. Uh, he yeah. Was, yeah. He but was he the was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So. I'm trying to remember that I remember you know, all of us. I think he's probably was housebound. Though. Yeah, he was yeah. the younger one. That's what I thought. Right? Yeah. Um, he was the younger one, so he really didn't. You know, it's nine years between him and Christy. Yeah. And he, he had a love hate for that. Believe mm. it or not, because he didn't. He wasn't around the yeah. older ones a mm. lot. Okay. 
But yet he was getting there. He was the baby. So, yeah. he, you know, the, he got spoiled by the older ones and me. Mm -hmm. So so he felt like he didn't have, he couldn't hang in the crowd yeah, like everyone yeah. else. Yeah, because we were we were teenagers. Yeah, then. yeah. And Corvette yeah. was like, I don't know if he liked it or not, but I liked it. Yeah. But he'd be all right. I know, that's why I'm scared to have another kid. <laughs> Yo. My daughter is 15. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, she, she says she wants a sibling, though, but it's like, ah. Uh, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of out of those phases. Like, yeah. so how do you prepare yourself to go back into? You can't. Yeah. You can't. And the saving grace in that, like, Chrissy mm -hmm. was nine, but Chrissy was a great help. Chrissy goes, at, Chrissy is my mini yeah. me. Like, she is. When I look at her, people say we're starting to look alike now, but <laughs> she looks just like her dad. But mm -hmm. when I look at her and how she moves and operates, she's my the mini me. She is really yes. a replica of me. Um, but she was a great help. And their father was there. Um, he stayed up at night with mm -hmm. Corval and everything. He was, like I say, he had his habit, but he, yeah. he had a good heart. Um, so that helped me. But you can't prepare when you got to go back because <laughs> I love to sleep. Sleep is my yes. friend. Me too. I need them naps. <laughs> I need naps in my whole eight at night. Yeah. <laughs> my sister said, you go to bed early. Like, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I need my rest. Yeah. So, yeah, you can't prepare to go right. back into that. Nothing uh, could prepare no, me for no, something like that. No. I think I'm going to just. Unless you have that rock solid partner. Yeah. That's going to, you know. Mm -hmm. Makes me feel safe yes. enough to jump that type of risk yeah that's true <laughs> I, so, I would totally agree yeah if you totally have that rocks and they're out there yeah they're out there somewhere yeah <laughs> so let me ask you this did you meet your children's father here in richmond mm -mm, no okay. high school we was we moved down here together. i moved down here because but <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um we moved down here together we, we was high school sweethearts i was walking down the street mm -hmm. summertime in new jersey and he spotted me, but I never saw him out. I yeah. didn't pay nothing, no attention. Uh huh. So it's funny how we met, though, too. Yeah. I was walking down the street with another guy. And he saw me. And he said, that's going to be my wife. Mm. And so my mom had joined this church. When she joined the church, his mother was evangelist at the church mm. so my mom joined this church her whole or well, her kids was into church my mom made me go to church i wrote yeah. that in the book so. <laughs> my mom made me go to church so i'm sitting at the back of the church huh? yeah you know when somebody make you do something you don't want to mm -hmm. do that you don't yeah. be there so i did the bare minimum and so my mom started having bible study at our home and stuff yeah. and she was like one of the ladies telling you don't really like you or whatever whatever that's my mother for I hooked up with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we, I wasn't interested at the time, you know, just yeah. minding my business. Mm -hmm. um, but when I met him, it was like, I love, I love a good laugh. I like yeah. a man that has a sense of humor, that's mm -hmm. loving, that can laugh with you, cry with you, and just, yeah. you know, do all those things with you. That's what I like. Right. And it's like we connected. Aww. So we laughed a lot together. He, was he older than you? No, we were the same age. So he was 15. Mm -hmm. You were 15. No, I'm sorry. He was a year older than me. Okay. Yeah, he, was he was 16. Older. Mm -hmm. And he had a drug problem at 16? 17. At 17. 17. Wow. That's pretty young. Yeah. Wow. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Today, the kids are even younger. With they the drug are. Habit. They are. And I'm talking about. And this wasn't like weed. No, not weed. Okay. He was strung out on heroin. No, at 15. 17. 17. 17. Yep. Wow. Maybe that was a thing in the 80s. I don't Yeah, know. I don't. I don't, you know, I never did drugs. Right. Stuff, so I, right. I don't, you know, I didn't, I, although I went to school mm -hmm. <laughs> for um, human service and drug abuse mm -hmm. counselor. Yeah. Um, I learned about a lot of drugs yeah. and I did study of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reason I wanted to learn is, you know, to see yeah. why, how people get strung out on it. Right. But when it came time to working in that field, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I still can't do it. It's too painful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. Did he tell you why he did drugs? No. Okay. He never told me why. Mm -hmm. But again, I equated right. to you got to surround yourself with good people. Yeah. 
you got to be careful with the crowd you hang around. And that's why I tell my kids. Yeah. I never let them spend the night nowhere. Okay. I never, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. Why? Um, but you have to be careful with the crowd mm -hmm. you hang around and your kids hang around yeah. and who you have in your home. Yes. Protect the energy. Yes. I would totally agree. Yeah, especially having daughters and even sons now, honestly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's no respect over there right now. Yeah. So you just guard your energy, your kids, and your home, mm. really, with all your might. Yeah. Um, I 100% agree. I go through my house now and I read Psalms 91 or mm. either play it and I anoint my house mm. because. We are living in some times, and we just got to stay prayed up and protected. Yes. I tell people that all the time. Stay prayed up because you just never know when something crazy is going to happen. But you don't know what's on the mind of people, yeah, you know. You so um, the reason I say protect your kids with all your heart, you know, we are responsible for our kids, right? So my ex-husband, mm -hmm. um, I never let my kids spend the night out because yeah. I just don't know what crowd of people would be where they wanted to spend the night out at. Right. And they, they didn't mind, you know, right. but I, I end up with a house full of kids because they want mm -hmm. their friends over. That's cool. Yeah. But um, they come to your house when they couldn't come to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My ex-husband, my best friend, um, her daughter was at my home and I was at work. Mm -hmm. And my little cousin was there. My little cousin who was in a wheelchair at the time, Chris, you know, all my kids was home. Mm -hmm. And my ex-husband, he didn't touch her, mm -hmm. but he asked her a question Okay, that was inappropriate. Your ex-husband. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He's deceased now. Um, okay. He asked a question that was inappropriate, and it kind of made her feel uncomfortable, which I don't blame her. Yeah. So when I got home, I was like, where is she? Yeah. Her mom had came, picked her up because she had called and told her mom, which I'm glad she did. Yeah. You know, but yeah, that was something to deal with. Wow. So it's like, and even then, mm -hmm. you know, I was about 31. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't 31. I was about 34, 34 at the yeah. time. Even then, when that happened, it left me feeling like I didn't know what to do. Yes. Because I'm married. I took a vow before God. Mm. So it's like, Indeed. do I honor this vow? Right. Or do I go with my friend? Right. And that was a battle. So I honored the vow until one day something happened. And I said, no, I'm not going to do was this. Was it inappropriate? No, it wasn't oh, okay. inappropriate. He, um, I got a divorce when he was locked up. Okay. So um, he had, I gave him an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, it's either the streets or me. Okay. And so it seemed like he needed and wanted the streets. So mm -hmm. I, I was at work. And my sister was visiting mm -hmm. and her pocket, but we had a hook hanging on the door, behind the door. Yeah. Her pocket was there. He took some money from her. Mm. And that was enough for me to say enough is enough. I went home. I, this is what I did. I went to my um, the nurse manager. I was working at the hospital. Uh -huh. I said, I'll be right back. I said, I, I'm going to take my lunch. And I never leave. When I work at the yeah. hospital, I never leave for lunch. Okay. I said, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Went home. Packed the stuff up fast as I could, mm. put them out, mm -hmm. and I went back to work. I know, that's right. I went back to work. Did it with grace. Did it with grace. And I was wondering, like, why for so many, why I didn't do that when yeah. I was newly married mm -hmm. and that incident happened. Yeah. And I, to this day, I really don't know why. But I do know why, because, like I said, I took that vow to God. Yeah. And I was like, once I get married, I never wanted to divorce. Right. Do but you God think had that other was plans. God's way of exposing who this person was. Yeah, and yeah. exposing me to it. Yeah, exposing me to it, so I could sit here and speak about it. A exactly. So that's why I needed. I was in training. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. So when I oh, go through something, when I when I go through something hard in life, growing pains hurt. Mm -hmm. Growing pains hurt, but the training God put you through is necessary. It is. And that's the chapter of my book. It was all necessary. Oh, <laughs> so, I love that. Yeah. Book is right here. Yes, Queen Chronicles. Love that. I'm so, going to read that. It was all necessary, and it helped me become the woman I am. And I'm, I still go through stuff. I still yeah. do. But I'm still in training. Yeah, so absolutely. So it's not for me. Mm. It's for the young women coming after me. Yeah. 
for somebody that may even be my age going through. Mm -hmm. So it's it's necessary. Yes, I totally so. agree. Are you married now? No. So you don't want to get married no more? I do. I but I I'm a weak romantic. <laughs> uh, I still believe in love. Okay. I, and I know there is someone for me, you know. Yes. Um, but right now, I'm still in training. Yeah, you focus yes. on yourself. I have to heal some things that I never healed or dealt with. Okay. And I'm, I have learned that. Um, like, I just need to heal myself yeah. and love on me more. Aww. I'm put, I'm putting myself out there more. Yeah. Um, so I don't really have time right now because she don't have time she nah. single but she's not <laughs> mingling okay? yeah because i want to put myself mm -hmm. i'm i want to be in you know right spot like i know has that's a plan right. and purpose for me and for me i don't need someone that's a uh what they call an optimist mm -hmm. ride my skirt tail or just want to be a part of me right because of blessings so you right. have to be god fearing yes he have to love me more than he love himself. <laughs> I know that's right. So you know, it's just you know, I have uh -huh. a couple of things out yeah, there. You some know, boundaries. yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I took a yep. master class on healthy boundaries, setting healthy boundaries. Aww. Thank you, Elder Helen Payne. Aww. I took it with her. Um, wonderful class. Yes. Because when you come from a family that don't set boundaries, and you're trying to break generational curses, yeah. You got to be the one. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that, you know, even at the age you're at, you're not one of those, one of those women that's just like, oh, I'm here, stubborn, not learning, not growing. Oh. You're you're out there like you're 32. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes girlfriend. Yes. But I, I, I like to learn something every day. Mm. So when I was at work yesterday, my coworker showed me something. I said, thank you for teaching me that lesson today. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, you know, because I like to learn something every yeah. day. I don't care who it's from. Mm -hmm. I want to learn it. Right. Because that's going to make you a well-rounded person. Absolutely. So if you're closed-minded and you're not open to a lot of things. Yeah. You're not going to grow. You're not. You're it's not going to be gonna hard. Grow. I like to try different foods, mm -hmm. you know. That's just me. I'll be on yeah. Pinterest like, let me try this right here. Yeah. Let me try this. <laughs> so um, I master eggplant parmesan. I heard I had oh the best. Oh, my God. I got eggplant downstairs. I'm like, what am I going really? to do with that? Oh, I mastered that. I Please get compliments. The recipe. <laughs> I, there is no recipe. I just do it. Oh, but okay. but um, I get compliments on that. I, that's like one of my best dish. Now, I never oh. I, I never like to cook. I can cook, mm -hmm. but I never was a big fan of cooking. Now, if I give you this eggplant, you can make that dish for me. Yes, eggplant parmesan. Oh, my God. That You're going to love eggplant. it. You're going to be calling me like, hey, fix that again. <laughs> um. But I I know how to cook. My mom is a great cook. Yeah. I don't. I'm not on her level. Oh, okay. Top <laughs> but, tier. Yeah. <laughs> but I know how to cook. But I re cooking is a lot of preparation. Mm -hmm. My mom be sweating her little heart out in that kitchen cooking, right? <sighs> in 2.5 seconds, the food is gone. Oh my god. Give me, yeah. Give cleaning. me cleaning. Yeah. Cleaning. I like love to organize, keep things clean. Because when I clean, my house is yeah. clean for the week. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh -huh. okay, I don't have, you know. Cause that's because your kids grown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those little great kids. Yeah, they happen. was there over the weekend. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, but uh, we had a beautiful weekend this mm -hmm. weekend. Me and my mom, Chrissy, and aunt, and uh, my young, Chrissy, youngest daughter, we went to the Lily Pad. Aww. Great restaurant, but it was yes. cold outside. We said, mm. outside. like, we need some hot <laughs> chocolate and stuff. But it was, it was nice. We Aww. do that every now and again, like. Just go out and, mm -hmm. you know, no cell phone, just connect. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh huh. Even when nice. my son from Jersey came down, me, him, and my mom went out to lunch. We like to eat. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just nice to have those moments. Mm -hmm. And it is. it's beautiful. Like, I sit and just think about those mm -hmm. moments. So I'm like, okay. Because yeah. my mom lost three siblings within like a year and a half time span. We mm -hmm. just buried my uncle. Sorry it was 12 that. of them. Now it's four. Wow. And my mom lived to see 75 and her other siblings did not. Your mom looks amazing. Your mom is 75. 75. And the no other, all way. her other siblings didn't make it to live that long. I just seen a picture of her. That lady look like she about 50. <laughs> yeah, she's 75. Um, oh, wow. She wanted to go to New Orleans for her birthday. So that's mm -hmm. what we did. 
So Look at her worried. and still walking. Uh -huh. and got great health and everything. Wow. Yeah. And she drives? She drives, yes. Yeah. Yep. She said, I think I want a new car. I'm like, okay, you're going to get your new car. Yes. Um, But that's a blessing. Like, those are blessings to me. Mm -hmm. Family time together yeah. and just the support. Yeah. The support is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I can truly say that my biggest supporter is my mom, mm -hmm. my children, mm -hmm. because I allow them to rip me a new butthole, honestly, yeah. when I get out of line, because I'm not perfect. Yeah. And they be like, mom, that wasn't right, you know? And I'm like, yeah. you know what? I take it and think about it. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what? That wasn't. Let yeah. me go back and correct it. So okay. that's where we're at with it. Like, yeah. I allow them to correct me too. I'm not yeah. I'm the mother, but I'm not that kind of mother. Oh, you can't tell me no. I'm, I brought you in this world. I'll take you. No, yeah. I'm not going to take you out. God going to take you out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> God I'm gonna not going to do that because I'm not going to jail. Yeah. That. So, um, you know, just the support. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she's like my biggest supporter. Like, me and Corvell lives in a house. I'm upstairs. He's downstairs. Yeah. My mom lives by herself. So she's always cooking. Oh. But I'm not always eating because, yeah. like, I just don't know what I want to eat anymore. Yeah. So when she cooked, she'd be like, I cooked today. I'd be like, what you cooking? And she'd, like, she'd tell me what she cooked. And I'm like, oh, I don't want that, you know. Yeah. But I try. You your taste buds changing? For sure. As yeah. you get older, your taste buds change. The food change. Yeah. I'm like, this is not real. Yeah, it doesn't even <laughs> taste the same no more. And you notice when you put food in a car now, you don't even really smell it. Wow. I just noticed that. So I'm transitioning over to plant-based now. Okay. I kind of want to just like be a fruitarian. I'm trying to get my life together to uh -huh. be a fruitarian. But okay. Because none of the stuff is real. Everything is coming from a lab. Everything is making you sick, bloated, messing up your pH. Yeah. Nothing yeah, is, is yeah. how it used to be mm -hmm. anymore. So I drink a lot of water and tea. Mm -hmm. I drink tea in the morning. Like hot tea? Hot tea with yeah. nothing in it. I don't mm -hmm. add honey. My mother said, how do you do that? I said, I just... Yeah. Once your body get used to something, you just used to it. Yeah. So I drink a lot of water and tea. Mm. Um, I don't drink coffee. I'm not a big coffee fan. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't exercise like I need to or should, but at work I can get up and like let me walk around some. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty healthy. Mm. Um, you know, no something yeah. here and there, but otherwise. Life has been good to me. Yeah, I, I see. can't complain. Just blessed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> looking yes, good, yes. and you're just living your life, yes, doing yes. you, putting myself out there yeah. to be around more positive mm -hmm. women, yes, people. Um, the support from my mentor is phenomenal. Yeah, Brenda Cobbs. Aww. Gotta um, give shout out to her. Yes, shout out to her. Yes, um, <laughs> um she has pushed me spiritually in a mm. way that no one has ever really pushed me right. and you know i i'm i go to church yeah. go to a big church um but i do like small churches as well yeah. you know because they give you that kind of attention you know yeah. like they know your name okay yeah um but you can learn something from everywhere a absolutely. Um, absolutely but you know everybody has poured a lot of good stuff i take what i learn and i take the things that's bad mm. i sit it over there and I dissect it. I don't just leave it there. I mm -hmm. dissect it. Um, but she has poured into me, pushed me, pulled me, mm -hmm. never gave up on me. And I just thanked her last night. I was yeah. like, thank you for the push, the pull, the pour, and yeah. all that. Because you need those kind of people in your life. Mm -hmm. And I also have to shout out to Tanika. <laughs> shout out to Tanika. Me, Tanika, Wilhelmina, Emma have been friends for over 20 years. Aww. And uh, we're going to Puerto Rico next week. I know that's right. <laughs> um, but just like I had a conversation with uh, Wilhelmina, Emma on Sunday. And just where we have came from right you know we the all grow different parts of life different yeah. parts of the world but just to see mm -hmm. them growing and we can have these hard conversations yeah i don't know where i would be without them honestly Aww. honestly that is beautiful so you don't need a whole big crowd of yeah. friends but if you got one two three Three? Yeah. Three best friends? Three good friends. You're blessed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so call me blessed. Yes. Yes. Because yes. I'm telling you, like, they have been there. It was ever since I moved down here. I met them when I moved down here. Mm, nice. Okay. Yes. So they've been a part of your journey for a while. Yes. So the funny thing is, mm -hmm. we was working at a nursing home together. 
And Emma and I had started at the same time. So when we was in orientation, I like to ask a lot of questions because I yeah. don't know. Emma was like, I wish you'd shut up. <laughs> so one day we was going to lunch and Tanika had just started working there. I was like, come with us to lunch. You need my friend to take you, you know, because we had to go to the bank and everything. Yeah. So we put her up front and Wilhelmina had this van. <laughs> And she had kids. <laughs> so first of all, it was collard greens in the door. So Tanika was like, what is this? <laughs> so we ride. We took like a two-hour lunch. Yeah. <laughs> we riding down Broad Street. She bumping the thong song. <laughs> all of a sudden, her whole back window fell out and shattered and hit the ground. Oh. Tanika was like, oh, my God. I want to get fired on my first weekend. <laughs> but ever since then, it's been like a connection. Yeah, so, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's but good. you need that balance. You do. So raising my kids, I didn't give too much attention to friends mm. because I'm trying to yeah, over here too. raising my kids survival mode. Yeah. But I didn't find out about balance till later. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, young moms, get mm. balance. Yes. It's going to help you. You have your me time, your children time, your friend time, mm -hmm. your man time. But most of all, put that God time first thing in the morning. Yes. And that's going to help with your day that's yes. going to orchestrate the day it really is uh -huh. it really is yes so let me ask you this if is there if there was any advice that you can give to a young mom that was in your situation when you were 15 what would that be a whole lot of prayer and hold on because mm. the situation can take you out it can make yeah. or break you and i right. totally understand i'm not oblivious to that right but when you pray a lot and you mm. talk to God, even if you just read the Bible, yeah. and if you don't know how to pray, I'm going to give you a little tip. Pray God's word back to him. Mm. So if you read the Bible and you go to like Psalms 121, which is my favorite scripture. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at that scripture. Yeah. I will look to the hills for where it's coming from. Help my help coming from the Lord. Mm. So you could say, Lord, you said in your word, da, 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 da. Yeah. Pray his word back to him. Okay. Because his promises are yes and I was amen. Ready to say that. Yes. Yes. His <laughs> yes. So <laughs> pray his word back to yeah. him if you don't know how to pray. That's somewhere to start. Because mm. a lot of times we don't know how to pray or where yeah. to start, especially when you're in a crisis mode. Mm -hmm. you, you, That's you, usually when you need to pray. Yeah, but a lot of people don't. They right. just find it, trying to find resources yeah. or some kind of help. And I get mm -hmm. that. But when you just. It's something God is trying to teach you in that moment. So just take it and learn it, but also go back to his word and mm -hmm. pray. Pray. That's going to definitely yeah, set the tone. It is. How you come out of the situation. Absolutely. I believe because, I, you know, I just started reading the Bible. Really? Yeah. And I was, you know, with my daughter, when I had this whole situation going on with my daughter mm -hmm. and she was away for like a month, I read the Bible faithfully and i'm telling you my whole inside changed yes even though so much ugly stuff was going uh -huh. on on the outside it was like inside i felt brand new and i'm like wow and i'm struggling to try to get back to that feeling yeah okay. i just need to fast and pray again fast yes. fast 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 yes so in the bible it also say mm -hmm. Though we're wasting away outwardly, mm. we are being renewed day by day. Yeah. So just Agreed. remember that. So no matter what the situation looks like, stop looking to the situation. Yeah. Stop looking to people mm -hmm. and look to God. Yeah. Because like I said, everything I went through was necessary. Mm -hmm. It was training me. Yeah. And it was helping me to grow to become the person I am today. So just stay in it. Yeah. And if he, if the situation don't turn out the way you want it to, mm -hmm. it's because he's teaching you something. He's yeah. training you. Yeah. He's showing so you So sometimes you might have to end up in the shelter. That's okay. Yeah. Sometimes you might have to sleep in your car. That's okay. Yeah. Sometimes you might have to go to a relative. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But just stay in his word. Yeah. Read it. Mm -hmm. Pray it back to him. Mm -hmm. And trust his plan and purpose, y'all. It's not something I read about. It's something I live myself. Yeah. So I'm just telling y'all these tidbits. Take them as you will. What would be your advice to a mom that's afraid of success? You're talking to me. 
<laughs> you ain't and afraid you write a book? No, let me tell uh-huh. you though, this was warfare too. Okay. Because <laughs> now I wrote the book and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to put it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm t- yeah. Right. Okay, so mm-hmm. I always felt like when something good happened in my life, something bad's going to happen. Mm. I had to change my way of thinking about that. Okay. Because that's not true. Mm-hmm. It was only true because of what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. So You're manifesting it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, success. I know my name is going to be in lights, but I'm like, whoa, <laughs> God, am I really ready? Yeah. Years ago, when I first moved down here and I was catching a bus, uh-huh. God gave me this vision. Mm-hmm. I was in a, a stadium full yeah. of people. Give it a word. Mm. So I'm like, Lord, you oh know, I know it's coming, <laughs> but I'm like, Brace yourself, girl. No, it's going to. Oh, okay, okay. It's, it, it's been years, and I had that vision. Uh-huh. And so my mentor, she spoke a word over me, and I'm like, oh, Lord, okay. Okay. So it's Good coming. training. So your training days yes, are leading you up to that vision that yes, you saw. that God gave me years ago. Oh, my God. So listen. But that advice was for me, because <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid of it because, mm, uh-huh. no, let me take that back. I'm not going to speak that over my life. I'm not afraid of success. I go. just wasn't ready. I love that. I just wasn't ready. I love that. So he's training me. He's preparing me. Mm-hmm. And I'm ready right now for anything he has for me and want me to do. I'm going to be obedient. Because being disobedient, you're going to be in that wilderness 40 plus years. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so long to get out. Yeah. But it's not worth it. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not. Let go, let God, and be obedient to his word. Because we go to hell for what we don't do. Yeah. People think, you know, and people think being nice is going to get you to heaven, too. No, mm-hmm. no, no, baby. No, Nice no. means stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't be nice. Yeah. Be nice obedient. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. Go with God's flow. Mm-hmm. And the more you meditate in his word, I call my, my office, I call it the prayer lab. Yeah. Lab, living and breathing. Mm. Everything in my office is living and breathing. Wow. So when I go in there, mm-hmm. I'm praying the word. Yeah. Praying life, speaking life. Yeah. So everything in my life is going to be living and breathing. Yeah. So that's what lab means to yeah. me. And oh, so, I love that. Yeah. So just go with the flow because mm-hmm. what's for you is for you. Yeah. And if success, no, not if. Success is for you. Mm. So you just got to go with it. Yes. You know, I was a very shy kid. I think I, 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 I could see that. I didn't say nothing. I sat and sucked my thumb and pulled my hair. As long as I had hair in my thumb, and, I was and, good. And you was a teen mom. Mm-hmm. But listen, <laughs> uh-huh. I sucked my thumb from birth to 17. I oh didn't even, God. honestly, Girl. I didn't even know when I stopped, honestly. But I never had to get braces. Never. Stop. Never. Wait. That's a I blessing. Don't, yeah, but I don't even know. Like seventeen, I just stopped. Mm-hmm. I just stopped. I guess becoming a mom, you just I didn't have time to suck yeah. my thumb. I had to change pampers and feed my give bottles and stuff. Yeah, they so suck you're right. Stuff, you <laughs> yeah, right. So that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. that part of it, you know, um, being a mom, like I said, don't come with a handbook. Mm-hmm. Do what works for you and your kids. Yeah. Because what works in my house may not work in your house. Right. I was called all kinds of crazy because one day out the month, uh-huh. I would give my kids a mental health day. Mm. I know for myself, I go to work yeah. five days, sometimes six days a week, right? Mm-hmm. These kids go to school five days a week. Mm-hmm. And they early. Like, yeah. I, I'm up in Jersey. We don't go to school 730 in the morning. Yeah. So they go early. So you think about your body and how your body feel when you go to work. Right. Tired. Yes. Sometimes you don't even want to go. Yes. yes. So you got to think about that kid. Yeah. And that made the world a difference. They didn't have to cut. If they cut, it's because they was being foolish and mm-hmm. wanted to. But they didn't have to cut school or anything like yeah. that. It's like, you know, if you want this day off, I'm going to allow you to stay. Right. So, right. yeah. So okay. That was, you know, I was called foolish, but it worked for me in my household. Yeah, definitely. You got to do what works for you. And when you talk to kids, come down to their level. Yeah. Because if you, I know as, as an adult, if an adult talking to me and they yelling, mm-hmm. I, I shut down. I'm not hearing you yeah. anyway. So right. if you're standing that tall over a kid and yeah. you're yelling, they're not really hearing you. Yeah. 
They're not. Come down to their level. Yes, they come. I've learned that in my parenting classes, you know, because my daughter, she used to blow up. She, I don't know if you ever seen Umbrella Academy. Ooh, it's a good show. She was Vanya. Vanya, <laughs> <laughs> Vanya was blowing up the town because really? she stopped taking her medication uh-huh, and uh-huh. she noticed her powers. Um, but I had to learn how to stay calm in those moments. And I'm like, how can I? Because I love that she's showing me what I need to work on within myself, mm-hmm. but I'm also feeling triggered because I shut down too. Mm. So it is good to stay calm yes. in those moments when your kids are yelling because both of you yelling and screaming, you're not going to get any results. So that's with everything. Mm-hmm. If this person go up yeah, and you go up, mm-hmm. you're going to clash. Yeah. So if you, that person go up and you stay down, because mm-hmm. a person can't argue with themselves. Right. And it's in the Bible. Yeah. A calm tone mm-hmm. calms the sea. Wow. So if you just calm, you stay down and let yeah. that person be up. And if they don't want to talk that night, that's okay. If they yeah. don't want to talk. You know, I don't like to go to bed angry. Mm-hmm. But I've learned, too, I have to meet people where they are. Yeah. I can't want everything on my mm-hmm. time and on my watch all the time. Yeah. Although sometimes I can get them in the like, look, yeah. we're going to talk about this now because I'm not going to bed angry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah. I, I get this off my mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the type of person I am. But, you know, that's, you know, you got to learn people in their love language yeah. and how they communicate. Mm-hmm. Because if as a kid they weren't able to speak, they might yeah. just yell. Mm-hmm. You because, know? you know, and, and, in this generation, you know, some of the kids, they don't really know how to communicate well. Yeah, yeah. and they don't do eye contact. It's like the eyes is the key to the soul. Look me in my face. Yeah, yeah, me, so. yeah. I can't connect with you looking over there. Yeah, talk yeah, to? yeah, yeah, yeah. So just those tidbits of things and just have understanding. Mm-hmm. And then you got to go back to when you were a kid. Because mm-hmm. a lot of our kids' traits come from us, mm-hmm. one or the other, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. So... You know the past. I know the line. She get that from her dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to take that talk yeah. off the table. Yeah. We're not going to say you. Not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want to speak life over that. Please. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yes, they they take traits from, and sometimes some things skip generations too. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, I'm like, okay, they might, they didn't get it from me or him. So yeah. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of our traits come from when we were carrying that child. How we were yes. raising that child, because if you was pregnant, and it people might think it's crazy, but it's nice to put the headphones on your belly mm-hmm. or read a book while you're pregnant. Yeah, because there's a vibration. Your baby can really yeah. hear that. So if it's hearing, I don't want this kid, it feels that way and it uh-huh. comes out. Yeah. And now your child is going against you because it felt already in the womb that you mm-hmm. never wanted it. Well, I'm, well, my kids should have felt that. Then. <laughs> <laughs> But you no. probably wasn't yeah, actively yeah. saying, I'm getting rid of yeah, it. Yeah, it yeah, have been thought, but... yeah, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't. No, I love them. Like yeah. I said, I have no regrets. Mm-hmm. They're like my biggest cheerleaders. And I remember, mm-hmm. um, and don't tell Rel nothing, because he's going to hold you accountable for it. Yeah. Um, I said, when y'all get older, I'm going back to college. Because my father left us a trust fund to go to college. But I used my trust fund to raise my kids. And that was so, beautiful. Um, so, everything for the kids. Yeah, it was. And it's <laughs> like I should have did the balance thing, but I learned. Yeah. So, um, when I told my kids when I get when y'all get older, I'm gonna go back to school. Mm-hmm. So Corvell was ten years old. How come, Corvell? Ma, you said when we get older, you going back to school, and I'm covered in fear because mm. I was C average student. Yeah. You know, like I, you know, as long as I get by, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I remember going to take the placement test and I was like, oh boy. And I did way better than I even imagined. Wow. I made the Dean's List at least four times. Look at God. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, because you know how you have a fear of doing something? Mm -hmm. And then once you get in, you're like, that wasn't that bad. Yeah. That's where I was when I went to school. And I always wanted to, once I got in school, I always wanted to go straight through and did stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So 2016, I had got my associate's degree. Mm. So now I'm about to go back. Oh. Chrissy said, when you going back? Because we could stress school together. I said, you'll probably be coming out when I go back, but I'm yeah. going back um, come August. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. good. I, I, you online. I love that you stay learning and stay putting yourself yes. in positions to be able to 
know more, understand more, and seek more. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You just it, she's an example of you don't <laughs> stop growing. <laughs> That's what my mentor say. That's yeah. her words. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep going. I have met so many great people just recently in my life. Yeah. And even I did Bible study last night and I was like, but you know what? I was nervous, but at the same time I was like, I got this, you know, yeah. super myself up. And I talked about Mary, Jesus' mother. Mm-hmm. But because I, I was in a heavy place because, you know, my uncle passed in and just, you know, just a lot yeah. of stuff. I was happy and sad at the same time because I got all these great things going mm-hmm. on. And then the death coming, death coming, you know. So I did marry Jesus' mother. My mentor told me that was my assignment. Yeah. So as I could have just printed the, you yeah. know, everything out. But I wrote it with a pencil. Mm. Because writing it helped me. Yeah. I felt so much better today. Yeah. Yesterday I was like, man, just to know Mary's story. One, three key points was she was three key points. She was humble mm-hmm. and she trusts God. She treasured the moment with the moments with her son Jesus. Yeah. And she uh what she didn't know or understand, she gave it to God so it could be uh, his will. Yeah. So I was like, yes. I said, I'm uh, got the Mary spirit. <laughs> <laughs> so those those are some key points that I learned. Yeah. Wow. So I was like, wow. And I just like I said, God knew I needed this assignment in this time of my life because mm-hmm. he prepared me for such a time yeah, as this. He did. So I was like, wow. And it just <laughs> helped me. I woke up feeling good this morning. I was late for work, but <laughs> I felt good this morning because mm-hmm. when you get into mm-hmm. the word and you mm-hmm. start dissecting it, you're going to feel that. Pain. Yeah, you really are. Uh-huh. You really yeah. are. I could honestly agree with that you know just yeah. learn because i remember not even knowing how to read the bible i called my friend i'm like hey what is 3 26 uh-huh. he said oh chapter he, he okay, knows, cha- yeah uh-huh. chapter 3 verse 26 i'm like oh that's okay. what that is yeah, okay yeah, so yeah. then it opened a whole new portal to understanding what it is that I'm reading, because at first I couldn't understand because I didn't even know mm-hmm. the the numbers in the wow. Bible. So, so I, I will tell people that's starting uh-huh. off reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. Proverbs is um, 31 chapters. If you read a chapter of Proverbs a day, starting the beginning of the month yeah. to the end, that's very easy in Psalms. Those mm-hmm. are two very good books to start reading yeah. the Bible. And they're mm-hmm. going to help you too. They very easy to learn. Yeah. Playing straight mm-hmm. to the point. Okay. So Proverbs for a month, if you come, where we at now? Today is the 10th. So come May 1st mm-hmm. to the 31st. It is 31. Psalms. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, Proverbs for the month. Okay. Because it's 31 month. chapters. Mm-hmm. So okay. whatever day you start on, just do it for 31 days because 31 chapters. So read a chapter a day. Oh, nice. I'm yes. going to do that. So that that's, I tell everybody to start not to read the Bible. Do that. Yeah. Because okay. it's plain and it's going to give you some enlightenment. Wow. Um, well, yes. I just really want to say thank you so thank much you for, for coming me. on <laughs> and sharing your journey. And don't forget the book, Queen's Chronicles. <laughs> Where can they purchase this book? Um, Right now, I'm on, well, they can reach out to me at, mm-hmm. um, I'm on Facebook as okay. Tysla, T-Y-C-S-A-L-A, mm-hmm. M Armstrong. And on Instagram, I'm one bless my. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so just reach out to me and I'll be able to get you a copy. Yes. Okay. okay. Nice. Well, again, I just want to thank you so thank much. You. Your was energy was just amazing. Everything so just flows so well. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I definitely want to have you come on for season two. Yes. You get a little bit more deeper. Yes. And how after empty nesting maybe yeah <laughs> i'm not empty nesting but you know yeah. Corvell is almost out the door so, yes yeah so, yeah all That's right is there it. anything you would like to add on that you felt like you wasn't able to share um i just want to share with mm-hmm. the mothers as well as the single dads because i at a um, organization i work for i had single dads on my caseload oh wow Send so them over. i'm not gonna um just X out the men because mm-hmm. there are some great single dads and I know yeah. a couple of them. Um, just keep the faith, mm-hmm. pray for your kids, over your kids, mm-hmm. with your kids, and understand where they're coming from. Yeah, understand the place they're coming from. So I'll leave that with you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs>